base. So that's kind of the split screen moment of the afternoon as we bring in Cliff Albright on all of this, co-founder of Black Voters Matter. That's a, a voting rights group that's pushing to reelect uh, President Biden. Cliff, good to have you back on the show. You know, I'm going to start by playing a clip from last night, if I can, at the Republican convention. This idea that there's some people like they had this celebrity Amber Rose out there who uh, says she's had a conversion, right? That she used to be someone who didn't really like Donald Trump at all. Now she's a huge fan. Let's listen to a little bit of what she said. My message to you tonight comes from a humble place. The left told me to hate Trump, and even worse, to hate the other side, the people who support him. When you cut through the lies, you realize the truth. American families were better when Donald Trump was president. What about this thought that, and some of the numbers back it up a little bit, that Trump may be making some inroads, especially compared to last time with black voters? What do you say? Yeah, well, um, you know, for a variety of reasons, I don't think that that Amber Rose necessarily speaks for the majority of, of black communities. And, you know, I think the, the research she mentioned that she had done some research and as others have pointed out, her research must not have included like the Internet, the Google machine, uh, where there's some basic facts available, including the fact that black unemployment has never been lower than it was under the current administration, not the previous administration. But, you know, to the point about are there more. Um, you know, black voters leaning towards the Republicans. We hear this every election cycle. We see this polling every election cycles and the numbers never change significantly. And, and in spite of them rolling out a series of black faces at their convention last night, um, and, and including one who, who seems to feel that black folks were better during Jim Crow. Um, in spite of all that, you're not going to see any any major shift to, to uh, Trump and, or the Republican Party in general in this election cycle. That's what we're seeing mm -hmm. and hearing okay. in our communities. People are very concerned about this upcoming election. What are you seeing in the numbers? You're not seeing it among black men, especially young black men. That's what we're hearing for the Republicans, not only hearing it, but seeing it and some of the numbers, putting some other states in play maybe that ordinarily wouldn't be in place. For example, Virginia, we have a recent poll from Virginia uh, broken down by race. And uh, if you look at it there, Trump's up uh, 10 among white voters. President Biden in this poll has a very big lead among black voters. Does it need to be even bigger than that in some states? Because that's what it's all about. It's all about the margins, not whether or not, uh, you know, Trump wins the black vote, right? Yeah, I mean, we know we know that he's not going to win the black vote. We, we don't believe, I don't believe that um, he's going to get 21% or, or 20% of, of the black vote. You know, that hasn't happened yet. And there's no reason why he would get more black votes in this election than what he got in 2020. But Actually, to be clear, if he, if he did, at, if he got 21, that would be a terrible number for Biden, the one that we had up there in, in a place like Virginia. It needs to be, the margins need to be wider for Biden. Fair? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely fair enough to say that it, it needs to be wider than that. Um, you know, again, I'm old enough to to remember when all the polls were saying there was going to be a red wave in 2022. I'm old enough to remember when all the polls were saying that Angela also Brooks was going to lose in, in Maryland. She won by 10 points. And part of the reason that had happened in both of those circumstances is because of the under polling or just the incorrect polling of black voters. And so, um, no, he's not going to get 21%. Now we're showing Biden with Jim Clyburn, obviously, because, you know, you look back at 2020 and a lot of people point to the Clyburn endorsement as the reason Biden won the primaries and went on after that win in South Carolina uh, to a huge Super Tuesday a few days later, became the nominee and then the president. So the black vote's been important to him throughout his career. It's particularly important in his presidential run in 2020. There's an article in The New York Times today talking about Adam Schiff, the congressman from California, warning of a quote unquote wipeout for Democrats if Biden stays in the race. I thought maybe we were past this kind of talk after what happened over the weekend, you know, but apparently some Democrats are still pushing to get Biden out. His most loyal group of supporters really been black voters, Congressional Black Caucus and others. So what would you say about that, that there's still some people pushing for him to get out? Yeah, you know, we're, we're um, frustrated by it. We think that now is not the time to be having that discussion. Um, President Biden is going to be the nominee. The majority of black voters, even a majority of those that think that he's old, which, by the way, we all knew that even going back to 2020. Mm -hmm. And we knew that before the debate. And we certainly know that after the debate. But the majority of black voters still say that they would rather that he be the nominee. What you're seeing is that you're seeing um, some, some Democratic elected officials who are faint of heart, um, combined with some mega donors, combined with some media personalities that have been calling now for three weeks for the president to drop out. And in spite of this barrage, what we've right. seen is that he's actually been holding steady in the polls. Imagine if they had spent people like Adam Schiff 
um, or George Clooney has spent the past three weeks actually bolstering up the Biden-Harris ticket instead of trying to tear it down. Well, he as you know, he's hanging programs. in there in the national polls, but the way that everything's set up now in the Electoral College, the Democrats really, you know, we've run these numbers, everybody else has too, probably need to be up three uh, to win. You know, you need to win the popular vote. Uh, that's the, 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 uh, that's the math where I know you're shaking your head, but that's the math we've kind of looked at. You, maybe it's wrong, but that's generally, I think, where it needs to be. It, and, and a tie is pretty much a loss in, in the swing states. But I think, you know? but Connor, I think if you look at, if you look at every major, not even major, every special election, every um, election, local, state election, right. what we have seen is repeatedly, and this is, this is just looking at the past two, three years, repeatedly that Trump and, or his, his, surrogates, his candidates, right, his chosen nominees have been underperforming. They overperform in the polls and they underperform in the election results. And that's why they have lost all of the special elections that have taken place. So again, I actually look at it at the reverse, that Trump actually needs to have a bigger lead going into election day because he has been underperforming and candidates that he support has been underperforming in every election over the past six years. We'll go the cliche, time will tell, right? So we're, and we have a lot of time uh, until November. And Boy, as this week has proven, anything could happen. Thank you, Cliff, uh, for coming on. We always appreciate your point of view on all of this. We'll uh, take a quick break here. We know we're waiting for the president, but. We're